Evan Mobley has been one of the most interesting evaluations I've had over the past few years. He's clearly a very good player, one of the best young defensive players in NBA history, but there have been expectations placed on him that I've been skeptical of because of drawbacks with his offensive ceiling. In this video, I want to talk about what I've seen with Mobley so far this season to paint a picture of where I stand with him as a player and his upside. But quickly before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I'd really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time and liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and I'll move you to my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Evan Mobley. This season, Evan Mobley is averaging 16.6 points per game, 10.2 rebounds per game, and 3.3 assists per game on 57.3, 14.3, 75.9 splits, and a 60.9 true shooting percentage. To a certain extent, these numbers are actually encouraging. Career highs in points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, field goal percentage, free throw percentage, effective field goal percentage, and true shooting percentage. On top of that, he's playing slightly less minutes per game compared to his second season, which makes these numbers even more encouraging. And when watching the tape, I've been very encouraged by his playmaking. His feel as a passer has always been good, and that dates back to his Rancho Christian days in high school. His vision has always been good, and the situations he's used as a passer are valuable. A PO duo where you have one of the best playmakers in the world in Garland as the handler, a roll man like Mobley who can make reads going downhill off the roll, a lob threat like Jared Allen, a floor spacer like Max Strews, and a suiting, cutting, creation threat like Donovan Mitchell, that's a deadly offensive scheme to have. And even with the slow start to the season, I believe this group of offensive players, when all of them are healthy, are a group that makes up one of the three to five best teams in the Eastern Conference. However, my skepticism of Mobley reaching the type of heights that he's been hyped up to reach starts with the shooting. Mobley was viewed as a perimeter upside big entering the NBA due to the flashes of his handle, the shooting touch, and the athleticism. He wasn't a perfect suitor and was far from an elite suiting prospect, but the flashes were there for a guy that could grow into one. However, he hasn't developed into a good suitor. He averages 1.2 three-point attempts per game for his career. This season, he's averaging 0.4 three-point attempts per game. And over his last 13 games, He's shooting 0 for 6 from 3. There are flashes of a mid-range game. According to Clean the Glass, he's in the 63rd percentile on long mid-range jumper attempts and shoots 42% on those type of shots. However, while those flashes can be promising, the volume isn't nearly high enough for me to believe he's a reliable suitor especially when he's all but refused to take three-pointers. And he really hasn't progressed as a self-creator either. 73.5% of his field goals at the rim are assisted on. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Mobley is shooting 72% at the rim on 7.8 attempts per game. Even if he's not self-creating a lot, He's clearly very effective at the rim in terms of being a play finisher, and he's very good at the traditional big stuff on offense, rolling to the basket, catching dump offs, put backs, being a guy that runs the floor in transition, which combined with his playmaking and athleticism, it's a very valuable skill set to have. But it's very clear that he's not a good self creator. When you look at his efficiency on unassisted shots, it really is concerning. Now, to be very clear, unassisted versus assisted field goals and how they're covered aren't a perfect measure because there are plays 
where a play is considered assisted on, but the player is creating, like in a dribble handoff situation, or they take two or three dribbles, but they're really effective dribbles. So it's not a perfect measure. But with how bad his unassisted numbers are, it is concerning even with that context. He's shooting 45.6% on unassisted attempts at the rim. He's shooting 19.5% on unassisted attempts from 3 to 9 feet. He's shooting 21.4% on unassisted attempts between 10 to 15 feet. He's shooting 0% on unassisted attempts between 16 feet and just within the 3 point line. He's shooting 0% on unassisted 3 point attempts. Now, you might say this is being a bit nitpicky. Mobley shoots 30% on unassisted field goals. While Chet Holmgren, another young big that I like a lot, is shooting 20.8% on unassisted field goals. So, why do I bring this up with Mobley but not Chet? Especially considering Chet is shooting nearly 10% worse on unassisted field goals. The reason is very simple. Chet Holmgren is a significantly more effective scorer outside of just at the rim. Chet is shooting 48.4% on 8 attempts per game outside of at the rim, while Mobley is shooting 34.4% on 5.4 attempts per game outside the rim. So Mobley isn't just someone that's not efficient outside of at the rim, He's also not taking the most attempts per game outside of the rim. If Mobley was the level of suitor that Chet Holmgren is, I wouldn't harp on this as much. But the reason Mobley isn't a good self-creator or scorer outside of at the rim is a combination of a few things. He's not a good suitor. He's really somebody that when you look at the numbers and look at the tape, isn't effective outside of at the rim, at least not consistently, even if there are flashes. He's not strong enough or aggressive enough to attack the basket on his own consistently. The handle is just okay. I wouldn't say his handle's bad. I do think he's good enough to grab and go. He's good enough to dribble off the roll. I would say he's even good enough as a dribbler to maybe even pass on the ball at times, but it isn't something you look at like a Victor Wembanyama or a Paulo Banquero in terms of handle, where those guys have handles that you look at and say they can create offense for themselves consistently. And really, there just isn't enough here to suggest he can be good enough to be a full-time primary creator, as a scorer, or really even someone that's a go-to option on offense. Now, does this make Evan Mobley a bad player? No, it doesn't. Not at all. Evan Mobley is a very good player. I would even go as far to say he's a great player. He's a great play finisher. He's a good playmaker. And even with the offensive concerns that make me skeptical of my expectations of him compared to others' expectations for him, you can't ignore what he does defensively. Mobley is one of the best defensive players in the NBA, and one of the most impressive young defensive players the sport has ever seen. Since entering the NBA, he's been a positive impact defender at worst and a generational defensive player at best. To be as good as he's been on defense since his rookie season is truly special, especially for a one-and-done player. His range is incredible. He's somebody that can fly around the court due to his fluidity as a lateral mover and his athleticism. His fluidity and athleticism are closer to a wing than a big. His feel for the game is off the charts. He's an incredible shot blocker. He's versatile. He can drop. He can head. He can hold his own on switches. He can protect the paint. He can be a help side defender. He's elite in both half court and transition defense. He has active hands. 
He really just has it all defensively. Sure, he does get bullied by more physical players, but his defensive value is about so much more than 1v1 play. The way he affects opposing offenses is about how it affects the entire floor, not just 1v1. And that to me is more valuable than just looking at the fact that maybe in a 1v1 situation he gets bullied. Overall, I think Mobley is a great player. He's a great play finisher, he's a good passer, and he's a generational defensive talent. And it's not like he's been bad on offense either. A career 16 point per game guy on above 50% from the field for his career through three years where the Cavs haven't been below 500, and mind you, they were one of the worst teams in the NBA prior to getting him. It's far from bad, and it also shows me just how impactful Mobley is, especially on the defensive end of the foot. And I do think he has potential to be a 20-point per game scorer. I see an all-NBA type of talent here. His ceiling is an efficient 20-point per game, 10 rebound per game, 3 to 5 assists per game player with defensive player of the year ability. That's one of the 20 to 30 best players in the NBA, maybe even a bit higher than that. But when I see these podcasts, articles, videos, and just overall takes on the internet about comparisons to Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, how he could be the best player on the Cavs and be that centerpiece as they look to contend, and maybe even superstar upside, I need to see more offensively. I need to see ability on the ball. I need to see improvement as a suitor. I need to see more scoring aggression if you want to see him reach those types of heights. He can be Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett defensively. That sounds lofty. Those are two of the best defensive players in NBA history. But Mobley is just that special defensively. He finished top three in defensive player of the year voting in his second NBA season. The youngest to do it. He has a chance to win defensive player of the year this season. And he will be the youngest to win that award. That's how special he is defensively. And that level of defense combined with pretty good offense is an incredible player. A player that would be in the 96th to 98th percentile among players in the best basketball league in the world. Someone that can make all-star and all-NBA teams, as well as a sue-in for all-defense and probably a few defensive player of the years. That's the kind of player he can be. And that's an incredible player, and if he racks up all-star, all-NBA, all-defense, and a few defensive players of the years, he probably will be a Hall of Famer. But some of these expectations people have for him are ones that just aren't realistic. To reach Duncan or KG Heights, or even reach the heights of being the best player on a contender, you have to be a special offensive player as well. Look at what Duncan did in 2003, or what Garnett did in 2004. Now, this isn't an indictment on Mobley. He's going to be a great player for a long time. It's more of an indictment on people placing those expectations on Mobley. I don't think Mobley is going to be a disappointment if he's not the next Tim Duncan or Kevin Garnett. I don't think he's going to be a disappointment if he's not this 25 point per game scorer. That was something I looked at with him as a prospect and saw that he would never really be a big time scorer because it's not how he's wired as a player. He's only averaged over 20 points per game once in his entire life. But I still viewed him as a special talent. And to this day, I still think he's a special player because of how incredible he is defensively the movement skills, what he does as a play finisher, and as a passer to bring real value on offense, I still think he's somebody that will live up to his draft billing. And based off my personal evaluation, I think he'll live up to that as well, if he isn't already living up to that. I think he's great, but I really think some people that are putting these type of expectations to reach certain height 
need to watch him play more and adjust their expectations. But that's the end of this video if you made it to this point. Thank you so much. Again, haven't already, like, subscribe, hit notification bell, I'm notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways to help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about Evan Mobley in the comments section below. With that being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.